Hi, Chad here with Purple Collar Life. We're here with the John Deere 2210. And if you recall, when I put the Curtis cab on, I had to take the Artillion toolbar off of the back. And you can see that the brackets for the Curtis cab actually sit where I had the bracket for the toolbar. So what I'd like to try to do today is figure out a way to get this U-bolt back in place. Now this is actually for the other side, so this will go here. Get this U-bolt back in place, put the toolbar on there. I think I can mount it right here on top of the mount for the Curtis cab. So we can give that a try. The problem is there's not much space in here. So I think we'll have to actually start the U-bolt up here, slide it down and see if I can get it to fit there. That's going to make the toolbar a little bit higher than I had it before, but I think it'll be all right. Let's get started and see how we can get it to work. You can see right here in the reflection of the glass, our flowering pear trees are doing great. The grass is starting to green up. Lots of fun activity going on outside this time of the year. Let's see if I can get these nuts loosened up. What I need to do is have this U-bolt down like that. This set right on top of that. I do think that will work. Actually it might give it a little bit more support since we've got the additional bracket right underneath it. What I do wonder about is that bar going right across here that might be right in my line of sight looking backwards. But the nice thing is I can always take that bar off when I'm not using it. Let's see if we can get these tightened on here in place. Try to slide back a little bit. If you haven't already watched the video about this Rox toolbar mount from Artillion, I love it. I was disappointed when I had to take it off. I was worried that it wouldn't work with the Curtis cab, but it looks like it's going to work great. Just took a little bit of thinking about how to get that U-bolt down and it, it works out that there's a, a greater gap up here to get those through. So it actually was not difficult at all. I just had to think about it a little bit to get it to makes sense in my head. Now let's put the bar across here and we'll get a better idea how it's lined up. because we want to be able to pull it off easily. It might just take a little bit of alignment to get it lined up right. So there we're on and we can pin this in place. So that will work. What I want to check now is putting a couple things on here, see how high up that really is. And it looks like I do need to make an adjustment here. It seems to be slid back just a little bit more. So I use my rigid impact, just loosen them up so that I can kind of push them while I am tightening it. We can do a little bit of a refresher for that Artillion toolbar, the tool rack. Um, I've got the toolbox, which mounts onto that bar. And you can see this is all actually mounted onto the garage storage bar system. 
So a very similar bar to the one that's on the back of the tractor is right here in my garage, which allows me to store these same attachments right on the wall of the garage, and I love that system. This is the chainsaw holder. This is what the chainsaw tools go in, so I put my bar and chain oil and my two cycle mixed gas in here. I carry a hatchet with me, got some wedges in here. And let's look down below, I've got some things that don't quite fit on this rack. So when nothing's on the back of the tractor and all the attachments I have are here in the garage, they don't fit on this bar. When some are on the back of the tractor, obviously the extras can go on the bar. We've also got the bucket carrier, which the five gallon bucket just slides right down through. Works great. And then if you've watched some of our other videos, you know, I use this tool attachment all the time. Garden rakes, shovels, anything with a handle, you can put right through here, holds it on the back of the tractor. This makes a great attachment for the back of the tractor. So we're gonna give the bucket holder a try. It does have nice locking cams. You lock those cams in place, and they hold it tight. Put your bucket right on. So there's that. Now it is quite a bit higher than it had been, even just you know four inches lower, but still perfectly usable to haul stuff around. Let me try the toolbox, and I'll put a link down below to the video where I actually installed this. And you can put this anywhere on that bar. So if you're doing multiple, you wanna slide it over to the edge, you can do that. If you've just got one and you wanna mount it dead center in the middle, you can do that. Now my problem with having this right here would probably be, it's gonna really impede my vision out the back window. So I'd probably put this off to the side, like right here, clamp it in place. And then I'll hop in the cab there and see how much visibility I have. See, that doesn't take up too much at all. I still got at least half the window to look out. If you recall from the five things I hate about my John Deere video, I'll put a link to that one up above if you haven't seen it. I said there's a million things I like about this John Deere 2210. One of the five things I hated was the location of the fuel fill. Someone suggested put something over top of the loader because every time I lean over to fill with diesel, I get grease from the loader onto whatever I'm wearing. So I used some of this packaging that the Curtis cab came uh, carefully packed in, and that allows me to lean over without getting my belly of whatever I'm wearing filthy. But I still insist, diesel fuel points in the center of a hood on a tractor with a front end loader is not the best location. I've got the tools out here. I wanted to show you how this works. Here's the MS290. You want to put this in so that the motor is sitting on this panel. That keeps all the weight from hanging on the bar. So you always want the motor on this rubber flat platform. You just pull this pin, undo the cam lock, slide the blade down, and you can see how that lets the weight of the chainsaw sit on this platform. That's very important. Then you lock this cam lock. If they're brand new like mine, they take some force to get locked. But then once you push it up, you can put this pin in. And that's kind of a safety. Keeps that cam lock from possibly falling down and keeps your chainsaw from falling out. And then in this basket, I keep my mixed ethanol free steel chainsaw fuel and my bar and chain oil. And then like I said, hatchet and some wedges. So really glad I was able to get this back onto the ROPS of the John Deere 2210. Works perfectly in combination with the Curtis cab. Just needed to figure out how to get those U-bolts down over here. 
once I figured it out, no problem. If you like videos like this, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps out the channel, helps out this video, and we really appreciate it. If you're not already a Purple Collar Life subscriber, click that subscribe button. We've got lots of videos coming out about tractor use, maintaining property, cutting firewood. Uh, we're into mowing season now, so in a, the next few days I'll be doing the first mow. We're putting our lawn cube lawn treatment subscription system down on the lawn this summer. So lots going on here at the Purple Collar Life house. If you haven't watched any of our older videos, go ahead and check those out. We've got lots of videos about this John Deere 2210 the Ford 8N tractor, uh, firewood, IBC totes, and all the camping and boating things we've done in the last almost one year. The channel is almost a year old now. We're about one month out from our one year anniversary. So we're really excited about that. Lots of great things coming in the future. Make sure you stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time.